Hey everyone, welcome to another R tutorial video, your second ggplot2 tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to show you some more of the features, uh, plotting features of ggplot2. I'm going to start off with a graph that's going to at first seem like simply a recap of of the first video that I did. In many ways, and in many ways, it really is. Uh, so let me uh, let me go ahead and get started, and I'll and I'll go through that first example quickly, so I can get to the uh, uh, I think uh, more interesting second example. Recall that. Whoops, wrong window. Recall that to load the ggplot2 package. I use the library function. The name of the package is ggplot2. I load it. The data set we were looking at before was diamonds. And to remind ourselves what kind of data is in this diamonds data set, I'm going to use the head function. And let's say uh, I want to create a histogram. Uh, last time I believed I used the, uh, the cut, but this time I want to use the clarity. So the syntax from the last time is as follows. And in that aesthetic function, instead I'm going to put clarity. Now just to, I didn't explicitly said x equals in, uh, in my last video. You don't need to, simply because by default the first argument of the aesthetic function is the x value, the, the, uh, the, uh, the variable that you're going to put on the x-axis of your histogram. Here I'm going to explicitly name it, just to show you guys that uh, you can either name it or, or not name it. You just have to uh, be aware of the, uh, the default argument orders of some of these functions. Here I'm going to explicitly say x equals clarity. There's no difference between what I'm writing here and leaving that x equals out. So I'm going to run this, okay, and to plot, I'm going to use geom histogram to actually plot the histogram. And this really isn't too different than what we saw last time. We see along the x-axis, we have the clarity and we have a histogram of the, of the diamond counts. Okay. So now on to the the new information, uh, the the uh, the new aspect of ggplot2 that I want to show you. Let's say that in addition to the clarity, we would also like to graphically represent the cut on the same plot. There are a number of ways that we could show this information, but let's say in this particular example, we want to uh, have a stacked histogram. Basically, each of those bars are going to be uh, divided uh, to show us the clarity of the diamond within each, I'm sorry, to show us the cut of the diamonds within each of those clarity, uh, which each, within each of those clarity categories. It's a little bit of a mouthful, I know. I think it'll be a little bit more clear um, uh, the, the plot I'm trying to make if I actually go ahead and make it. So let me just go ahead and blunder ahead and, and produce the plot, and I think it'll be a little bit more, I think it'll be easier for you guys to understand once you see it. So, I'm going to start off very similar to the way uh, I did last time. But now, I'm going to add another aesthetic variable called fill, and here I'm going to put the the um, the field cut in here. So I'm going to run that. and create the histogram. And there you can see it on the lower right hand corner. The shape of this graph is very similar to the first one that I made, but you can immediately recognize that it's also very different. There are several colors in this histogram that just weren't in the other one. The other one was just black and white and gray, and this one actually has uh, several colors in there. Each of those colors 
uh, represent the cut of the diamonds that fall within each of those clarities. And you can see that based on the legend that appears on the right hand side of that, uh, of that plot. Uh, you can see each of those colors represent a different uh, category of cut. And the size of those bars represent the, uh, the count of those cuts. So here we've created a histogram that displays both cut and clarity visually at the same time. Uh, so a really simple plot that actually shows us a lot of information visually very quickly. And uh, let me, uh, uh, I'm going to end the video pretty soon, but let me just uh, uh, talk a little bit about uh, ggplot2 and how it works in general. Notice that uh, to add a new aspect or feature or, or, or to change my plot in ggplot2, um, I simply added a new, uh, added a new argument to one of my functions. Uh, ggpl ggplot2 really functions like that. You either to, to make a tweak to your graph, uh, it's going to come with certain defaults, but to make tweaks, you either uh, add another argument or you add another function. Uh, really, you start off with a with a default base graph, and you make little minor tweaks and additions to your graph to to add extra features to it. That's going to be a continuing theme that you're going to see over and over again in the uh, in the rest of these videos. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, for now, um, if you want, in the meantime, if you want to learn more about ggplot2, I highly recommend uh, looking up the ggplot2 documentation online. There are a lot of excellent examples that are very easy to walk through uh, online. The, the code's right there, open and available to you, and, uh, and it's a great way to learn ggplot2. Uh, I'll end it here for now, and hopefully see you guys soon. Bye.